Hey, welcome to the video. My name is Steph, and we're going to talk about if you are a web developer and you're looking to get into the freelance game, and then you're looking at maybe hosting to support your clients. What can you do? I got an email from somebody recently asking that very question, so I figured I'd answer it in today's vlog. A vlog in a car. So uh, I'll get to the point. They're freelancing, took my courses. They're starting to get the first clients. They want to look at hosting solutions so they can manage their hosting accounts of their clients. And that is a very seductive thing to want to do because when you manage your hosting, but the hosting rather for your clients, you get to control the parameters of the server, which can make your job as a freelancer easier, right? So you you know what you know what the configuration is, the server that you're using, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The downside is then you have to manage that server. If they have trouble with emails and stuff like that, you may have to get into headaches there. But it's something to do. Imagine if you have a stable over time of 50, 60, 100 clients, and each one is paying six bucks a month for hosting or something. So that's not bad money, right? An extra, you know, six, seven thousand bucks a year for passive income. It's a good way of doing it. And I've done that in the past where I got, I still have from 15 years ago clients on, uh, on a server, and it works great. I use a fully managed solution. So let me get to the point now. This uh, individual is asking me about virtual private servers, VPSs, and generally speaking, that, that would be the way to go versus other server solutions. Now, what are the others? You can go shared hosting, which is your typical hosting at three bucks a month. The problem with that, you're very limited in terms of what you could do in your configuration. So, but it, it, for a lot of websites, it's much more than enough these days. Another option, if you got really heavy duty, is to do a fully dedicated server whether you have one installed at your place, which I would never recommend that you do. I've done that back in the 90s. I had, I built a server box up myself. I bought a license, I think it was NT server. And then I, uh, or is it Windows 2000? Anyway, it doesn't matter. And then I would run this server in my place. I had a dedicated ADSL line. I had one of the first ADSL lines in North America. And I was hosting, I was hosting VC funded sites. I had a whole bunch of clients. Now, eventually, though, I uh, moved to a, a dedicated server that I rented in a facility, and it was fully managed in, well, not fully managed, it was managed in terms of the hardware. So if the hardware broke, uh, uh, you know, hard drives fail, et cetera, they would go in there, replace it, et cetera, et cetera, within 20 minutes. So that, that allowed me to sleep well at night versus having my own physical server right or, you know, if something happened two in the morning, I was the only one there to fix it. You never want to be in that position. And I since moved off of physical servers because I didn't want to be dependent on one physical box that could fail and where I had to do patches and updates as well in terms of the software. So I moved to a VPS, a virtual private server, with a solution where I still had to commission the server, I still had to configure it, I had to apply patches to it. I, so basically you had to become a pretty knowledgeable Linux, most of these servers are Linux, I had to become a pretty knowledgeable Linux administrator. And uh, this gives you ultimate control over the environment. But the problem is, again, you're, you're, you're saddled with this work. Now, as a freelancer, you don't want to have to spend your time working on server configurations and patches and updates, security updates. These happen on a regular basis. You don't want to have to deal with that. So my recommendation is to go with a fully managed VPS. So you don't have to be a Linux administrator. You don't have to worry about these things. So what's a fully managed VPS? A fully managed VPS is a virtual private server, but you have a team that takes care of all that stuff for you. This is the hosting company that takes care of the patches, the updates. And I would take it a step further. I would find a VPS, which I found one just over a year ago, first one I ever found, was a VPS that had control panels installed for you, whether it be a cPanel with Web Host Manager or Plesk. These are very common point-and-click point web interface control panels that allow you to manage your server most functions, 
setting up new accounts, applying SSLs, uh, granting SSH access, all this kind of stuff that you want to do, configuring databases, etc., installing a Ruby app or installing uh, packages and so forth from, you know, installing Python, Django. Uh, these control panels allow you to just point and click, boom, 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 Bob's your uncle, everything's in place. So you don't have to become a command line ninja to get your server up and running. Now, some of you may be saying, but if you're going to be a proper web developer today, you have to be a command line ninja. Yes and no. If you're going to work for a large organization, you may have to. You may have to, depending on what your role is, because typically they're going to, they're not going to let every developer go into the server, right? Uh, you have to know the very basics. But if you're a freelancer, these skills become much, much less important because freelancing, you're working on smaller projects, which means you're not going to be working with teams very often, if at all. And because of that, you don't need the controls in all the um, tools that you might need when you're working on larger projects for larger organizations. you got to understand that in development, you don't want to necessarily be in a position where you're constantly, um, where you're applying enterprise level processes to small projects, as then you're going to make very, it, it very difficult for yourself to be able to manage uh, the projects that you're on if you're an individual developer. So small time developer, best off of a virtual private server that is fully managed. The cost is about the same. And so you don't have the headache. So what we did is we had, I went from uh, shared hosting, where I overpowered out with killersites.com many, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Then I went to fully, fully dedicated server in my place. And then I went to uh, partly managed physical server at another, at another location, which I had for eight years. Then I went fully managed there, physical server. Then I went unmanaged VPS, virtual private server, where we had to configure and install and patch. And we still have that for Studio Web 3. But for Studio Web 4, we started experimenting last year. Well, it wasn't Studio Web 4 we started with, but last year I experimented with a, a VPS, a virtual private server that was fully managed with control panel. And we started with the websites, and now Studio Web 4 is deployed there, and it works very well, works like a charm for our needs. And it's great because I know that they got 24-7 support, they take care of problems for me, and for me to do your typical 95% or 98% of server operations I can do through point and click, and graphical user interface is still easier. It's still easier for the most part not in all things, but for most things, GUIs are easier. If they weren't, we wouldn't have graphical user interfaces with macOS and Windows and iOS and Android. We would be using command line if command line was easier all the time. No, most of the time, graphical user interfaces are easier just to manage. So we, we have that. And it's been over a year now. I've been using the VPS so that is fully managed. We don't have full control if I want to allocate RAM or CPU to particular accounts, I have to send in a request to the company that manages the VPS. Rather, when I had the fully dedicated server, I could do it myself. And But, you know, the lag time is 15, 20 minutes. I say, okay, I had to give this particular account an extra two gigs of RAM, and it's just like, boom, and Bob's your uncle, everything's cool. So going back to the original request or the original question, Yes, I would go with a fully managed VPS if you want to provide hosting for your clients. And with the control panel, you can just set up their domain, ba -ba bang upload your files. It's all there. It's really easy to do. So you don't have that headache because as a freelancer, you have to minimize the amount of work that you're doing as much as possible. You have to put in processes as, as much as possible. That's how you become very profitable with processes. And a part of that process, part of establishing these processes rather, is to get a VPS that is fully managed. So they partner with you in the sense that they just manage that. And guess what? The cost is about the same, if not exactly the same, as getting an unmanaged VPS, as from what I've seen, anyhow. So there you go. I hope this vlog is useful. This is a shot on the old cheapo GoPro, but it's easy because it's right on the car like this. We'll see how it looks. Ciao.